I kind of know why people love internet shopping because it's like bloody Christmas when you <laughs> you just roll up home and you've actually got a Christmas present on your back porch. How bloody awesome is that? So you know, I get it. I get it. I'm I'm. I apologise to my wife on camera. I get what it's about when you're internet shopping. I mean, it's pretty bloody fun. But even better, even better, this is some cool shit that Cyrocell sent us over to have a crack at. So I figure, as a TV, oh well, hang on, we're not a TV show. As an internet show, we've actually become an of age because people are sending us stuff to have a have a try with. So how bloody cool is that? So we're going to have an unbiased inspection of this cool Cyrocell product. I reckon one of my coolest bits that I reckon so far would have to be these groovy little, how cool is that? These are actually so you can make some in honeycomb in circles. How bloody awesome is that gonna be? Even got the little, even in here, I'm assuming that's the wax that goes in the middle of it. So you put that in there for the foundation starting point. And then we put that in the hive and the little ladies will build a, I'll put it the right way around. <laughs> the little ladies will build some circular honeycomb. And the guys have even got some cool pots to put it in. Where the hell did they go? The wife, we had a party here on the weekend, so the wife cleaned up and we haven't lost them. Fear not, people at Cirocell, we haven't, we haven't lost the pots. But anyway, they've got special pots to even put that in. How groovy is that? So you'll be able to have some wicked ass round honeycomb coming up after spring. We won't actually be able to show you that straight away, but what's more important and more actually necessary for what we're doing right now is the feeders. So we'll just pop this out of the way. This is what we're interested in at the present minute because we're still feeding a few of the ladies, especially on the armor blossom. So is it they were, there's a couple of, well, we have only got a few here, but there's a couple of them that need a bit of extra boost along with a bit of sugar syrup. So I've got a really cool one for the, a little one for the newt boxes. Obviously, if you've got your newt box split in half, you have one each. If you've only got the whole newt box, I guess you fill up both. How groovy is that? And of course the bees can run, we'll show you on this one because this is pretty cool. So the bees can run up in here and run down into the syrup and not drown. Because anybody who knows about feeding bees, when you have that little pot, well, one, there's a couple of things that happen. They either drown in the blooming stuff or it drips on their head out of that jar when you don't really want it to. I watched a few shows and the poor bloke had actually drowned his bees in honey syrup in the winter time. So, but we're coming into spring now. So the girls are all getting excited actually First decent warm day we've had in a week, so which is pretty crap for Armour Blossom, but anyway, shit happens. Anyway, I thought this was pretty cool. They've even made the box to sit the jolly things in. So you don't have to try and find a spot for it. So this is the this is the bigger feeder. We've got an eight frame and a 10 frame, of course. So you can, uh, this is the eight frame one. Have a look at that size there. And this has got another bit in the middle. So you can actually, the girls can run up, run up in there. So that just slides down there. So the ladies don't drown and they can get a little they're obviously in there a little bit in there having a little suck and obviously this one they can run up same sort of thing so they run down here and then they can have a feed but we're going to put it in a box and of course show you how cool these are i like the fact it has its own little frame they've made up so that can just sit into the system um yeah on the top and obviously put the lid on top of that and the little lasses can have a Good old nibble on some sugar water without getting drowned. What does that say here? Made in, that's what I can't bloody read. <laughs> oh, there's the sun. Look at that. Made in New Zealand. Bees for life. Now there's a cool little saying. Look at that, I like that. Bees for life from our Cirocell friends. <laughs> awesome. Cool. There's something else cool in this box though that I am very interested in. Now, just quietly, I'm not the biggest fan of plastic foundation in, in the brood box, but when you're on a honey run and there's shit going everywhere, they're, they're bloody awesome. But these, the special thing about these ones, I reckon it's really cool. They've actually made little hole, like honeycomb holes on the side, because normally they have all those squares and weird ass bloody shapes to get out of the mold. But these guys have actually got little, little honeycomb sections. So obviously the ladies can fill that up or they can go in there and get rid of the beetles and the bugs and all the crap. And maybe the moth eggs, so they're always the ones that freak me out on those frames over here where I am. But how cool is that? Check that shit out. That was bloody clever. I'm not sure. There's some serious ass plastic molding going on there. But that'll be with the, we'll give this a crack with the um, circular honeycomb making bit because we're a little bit early for spring yet, but we'll get the feeding thing organized. 
And there's something else in here that I've found. These ones, my wife didn't throw them out. <laughs> Golly, this is probably a different episode. Ah, shit! Don't break stuff. Oh man. Anyway, that's the lid. Oh, they thought of everything, these guys. So they've got the little packets to put them in. So I'm just, <laughs> could you imagine wandering down through the bloody, what is that, Big W? I went to Big W to try and buy a saucepan. Oh, fucking things about that big if you <laughs> kick out. That was a big one. That was all of whatever, useless piece of crap. Trying to mix up. You imagine how many bloody Big W saucepans you'd need to do a few hundred litres of sugar water? God damn. Anyway, we're down visiting the kids. Little suburb out of Adelaide. I think it was Prospect, I think it was, all the edges. There's a couple of different suburbs there. I'm pretty crap with suburbs, but anyway, down there, visiting the kids, and the, for your lung lass, she took me to this new, little bakery making naan bread. Unfucking believably gorgeous, like two bucks for this great big piece. I'm only like, I made a pig of myself. I had it for the next couple of days. Actually, I bought two, because it was so jolly good. I think I had half of it eaten on the way home. Anyway, I'm off the track again. Anyway, they have some awesome, in that area, they have some awesome shops with all this wicked ass, big saucepans and there was one crazy big wok I swear you could have had a bath in the thing but anyway this is what I was looking for a decent sized saucepan actually I bought one there not so long ago which is the one I had originally so I got this one because it was a little bit bigger this is a hundred litre one so I figure I can do 40 litres of water and 40 kilograms of sugar and it won't run over the top because there was some controversy about having some more room for the sugar to dissolve in the water and I'd hate to admit it, but the lad was right. It does. So if you do 40 litres and 40 kilograms, you get 60 litres of sugar water. So half by volume, is that what the science teacher would have said? Half by volume or something like that? I don't know, some shit like that. Anyway, went down to the shop, went down there, got that, that was cool. Took it into the engineer's shop and said, I'd like you to put a little plug hole in it. And the man tells me that that's an aluminium saucepan. It's not stainless steel at all. So that was an eye opener. So I'm glad I didn't try to weld the shit up because I would have made a hell of a mess. So I got him to put a plug in because, hey, then I won't have to steal the wife's jug, will I? That's what I was, I didn't think of that until just then. <laughs> now this is plumber's thread tape. So it's, it's bit, so it's actually a bit heat resistant because I figured it might get a little bit hot, Ben, and we're making this, boiling this crap up. You don't need to boil it real bad, you just need to get it warm enough to dissolve the sugar. And I still did it backwards, you idiot. Uh, well, well. Mate, I hope we've got a bit of one inch hose to stick on there, otherwise that's gonna be fun. Guess you could just put your finger there and drive it in. <laughs> Anyway, I bought a new, talking about saucepans, I was got so carried away in this cool shop, I bought a new, um, one of these hot plate things as well, which I haven't set up yet, but that's pretty cool. And I gotta show you this. And I also found this wicked ass, I reckon it's a soup ladle, I don't know. It's either that or I get banged on the head with it, that bloody hurt too. But I thought it was gonna make an awesome scoop for taking the crap out of the wax. But. I don't know, do you reckon they beat that in there? Because they've got all these little cool hammer marks. They've got me stuffed. Anyway, I thought it was pretty cool. I think it was like 10 bucks or something. Still, I reckon it was great. I just bought it for the hell of it because I thought it was wicked. <laughs> Maybe I could use it as a hat. I don't think it'd keep the sun off much. Or, hang on, what about if I was in the war? I could use that as a gladiator hat. I'd have to bend that a bit. <laughs> anyway, fuck, that's cold. <laughs> How cool is that? I guess go and get some water. Get some of this, my bloody hell. All that shit is from when we were melting the wax, by the way, so. In between filming, I actually try to run a farm as well, so I don't get back here all the time. Rightio, so we tip some water in. Oh, golly. We're just gonna make a little mix. I bought this so as like I said, I bought this so as I could actually, because the other one I've got is 60 litres. And when you do a 40 litre mix, or 40 and 20, no, 40 litres of water and 40 kilograms of sugar, and you end up with a little bit about 60 litres. And the last little stirring part, a bit interesting. Trouble with not smoking is you've got to you've got bloody go and find a cigarette lighter somewhere or a box of matches. Isn't that the weirdest shit when you're at the when you're at the bloody servo and you try to buy a box of matches and they don't even sell them? They only sell cigarette lighters, and I'm not sure what that's about. But it's odd. 
Maybe they've just got a you know, deal going with Bic or something. One other thing I should show you. This is rather, this is rather cool. Check out the size of the fucking lid, would you? Check that shit out. I'm like, that is just, what have we got? We've got the Kitchen King. Tell you what, poor old Kitchen King had no idea he was going to be out here making sugar water, did he? And then I thought, you know what? If I really wanted to, make a bloody awesome weapon and go, whoop! Sharpen that edge up, you cut someone's head off. <laughs> That'll suck if you run out of gas. Woo! <laughs> hey, that's a good thing. Now, this isn't necessarily a good knife, but it's the only one I've got. <laughs> See, there's a bit of a use for everything around here. <laughs> the old bar that don't fit nothing. We give that a bit of a stir up. Yeah, that'd make a shitload of toffee, wouldn't it? <laughs> Imagine that. I'd be a bloody all day sucker if there was one when it made a bloody big lot of toffee like that. Does anybody make toffee anymore? Back when I was a kid, that was our treat. We used to boil up water and put them in little patty pans and mum would give it to us and we could suck on basically sugar and water. We thought we were all cool. Yeah, hell it's grim, isn't it? <laughs> I was just going to say, it's interesting, we've had a few people message us about, you know, how we put this all together, this show. And the cool, and the thing is, it actually is bloody a lot more involved than you'd think. We're not just dicking around on our mobile phone and bloody did this Monday and putting it up tomorrow or did it because the lad, he lives like, what, what are you, three and a, three old hours away. So he comes up here to the Riverland and we do a bit of a belt to try and keep you guys entertained. So, it's, yeah, I think it's a, it's a lot more involved than I thought it was going to be when I started out on this little journey. But we're having fun and hope you are too, so... Keep on keeping on. I would suggest that we're going to put that cool ass saucepan lid on top of this. Otherwise there'll be some little lady who'll smell this sweet nectar and go flying in there and I'm pretty sure if she hit that hot sugar water would not end well for her. She'd probably that would be the last sweet treat she'd ever have. Look at that. Ooh, the hell, eh? We might have to put it back on again. <laughs> I thought we stirred that up pretty good. Oh, another epic fail here on national TV. No, international internetting. <laughs> oh, see, I can make all the mistakes for you, so then you don't have to make any. Well, that was a bit bloody slack, wasn't it? I think we've created those sugar blocks. You know, when you, I think you probably don't get them anymore. When I was a kid, you have one lump or two. And then have these like cubes of sugar. I think I'm gonna have to light this up again, aren't I? Oh, uh, this is gone. Look at that. I've made my own little ice cubes. Mmm. Tasted good. <laughs> a little bit crunchy. Fairly sweet though, surprisingly. Being the sugar. <laughs> Anyway, I think I might just go and get myself a match. And light this back up, and we might be putting this in the pot in the morning time. Don't go away. <laughs> I'm all sticky now. Yeah, fuck, now my stirring stick's all sticky and all. <laughs> Golly! Come on, fella me lad. Oh! <laughs> Just when you thought we'd get it done in one episode, looks like you're gonna get another go with this. <laughs> to be continued next, next time on the Bush Bee Man. See if Mark, dopey Bush Bee Man, can actually dissolve sugar in water. I mean, you know, it's a really complicated job, ladies and gentlemen. Look at that. You know, I'm sure you could probably Google dissolving sugar in water. But of course I didn't think it'd be that bloody complicated. I mean, I've done it a hundred times before. <laughs>